It's December 1985 and Catherine Rosier is hovering on a cliff edge. Her best friend Nicolette is dead and Catherine thinks it's all her fault. But before she jumps, she wants to confess. The story she starts telling isn't hers alone. Forty years earlier, Catherine's uncle Charlie jumped from the boat that would have taken him to safety, just days before the Germans occupied the island. Charlie trusted the one friend he shouldn't have, and he was betrayed. The Book of Lies is set in Guernsey, which is where I grew up, and it's still a place that I call home. The character and story of Catherine Rosier was loosely inspired by my own teenage diaries, which I'd rediscovered when I was tidying up my bedroom. I was embarrassed to read my tragicomic teenage rantings, but it reminded me of how fraught that whole period was. I remember vividly how I fought tooth and nail to make certain girls my best friend, and the pointless crushes I had on boys who wouldn't even look my way. But what I remembered most clearly of all was how important all of this felt at the time. It was deadly serious stuff. Catherine Rosier might be top of the class in school, but she's underpopular and overweight. She almost doesn't care until she's befriended by the gorgeous Nicolette. Their friendship isn't equal though, and very soon turns nasty. Very nasty. But the Book of Lies isn't just a story about adolescent friendships and bullying. It goes much deeper. The story of Catherine and Nicolette is intercut with the story of Catherine's Uncle Charlie and what happened to him in Guernsey during the Second World War. In the book, the past continually interrupts the present and there is even the sense it might just predict it. The Book of Lies is about history and how it is written, revised and rewritten. And in Guernsey, the history is imprinted on the landscape. All along the coast are these towers and concrete bunkers and I was drawn to them especially as a teenager. I think because they were so forbidding and imposing, and perhaps because they were the one place us kids could go and not be seen. We'd race around the coast road on our scooters, drink cheap booze sitting on the cliffs, and stare moodily out to sea, wondering about life and what it was like out there. The bunkers and towers behind us seemed to echo our own sentiments. And when I was that teenager, I heard all kinds of stories about the occupation, from the grandparents of my school friends and from my own mother, who has an ear for a good yarn. What surprised me was how much they differed. There were some people who glossed over what had happened, other people who were very bitter about it, and others still who made it sound like an adventure story. Everyone has their own version of the occupation. It's become a bit like folklore, and the island is very protective and defensive about it. I think it's left a difficult legacy 